Right then. I've gone to Boxton Church. It was closed up. Reminds me, whenever I look at that church, it reminds me of the plague for some reason. It was around when the plague was on. Uh, and now we've got COVID-19 and it's locked up. Um, anyway, I'm just sitting here having a little quiet uh, drink of warm water. I've had some cheese and tomatoes. I've got other food. Um, just having a little break. We're about halfway now. This is the halfway. This is the West Mendip Way, by the way. And um, I'm just going to put this up here, do a little video. Do a little video of me having a drink of water at my flask. take just boiled water and sometimes a tea bag, a herbal tea bag. Um, so cheers, this is to our first day, it's not the first day of spring, it's the first day of meteorological spring on Sunday which is the last day of February. But it's not officially the first day of spring until the 20, 21st of March. But meteorologically, Sunday the 28th of February it's the first day of spring. And as you can hear, the birds are twittering. I had to tie my hair up because I was so hot. But you need this coat, the weather can change later into the walk. So, it's been a nice walk. Not too many people out. It is a lockdown. Um, the restrictions are starting to be lifted soon. Some in stages. It's going to be different stages. And the next stage won't follow unless the date is right. So, it's too early really. I think everyone should be inoculated first. I had my first jab two weeks ago. Got a nice chicken casserole on the slow cooker. So when I get home, I'm going to have a nice big dinner. And hopefully today is the start of the walking season. I've got lots of new projects to do as well. Um, I tend to do this one at least once a year, this particular walk. Once a year. It's the first time the church has been shut for me when I've come off to Crook's Peak. Crook's Peak is through the wood there. They're busy doing the Pinkly point cables, but it's also looking like it might be a type of bypass as well. I wouldn't be surprised if it isn't a bypass. Although you've got the M5 down there. Anyway, 2021. I'll just stay here for a bit longer and I'm going to go. Right, that was a close encounter. A little family came by, but I've already pinched the seats. But uh, yeah, they said hello, they were friendly, so they get, a, they get a point. The birds are singing. This is the West Mendip Way. I do what I tend to do on this walk, is a little bit of video in here and there. And anyone who knows me, knows my walks, will think, Oh, we've been up there with Sheila so many times. Yeah, I know. But you've never been up here with me on this day. Here's a bit of a climb for the first five, ten minutes. So we get up to the first gate. 
then it levels off. And I am expecting to see more people. Now that was one little family. Parents and two children under 10. Probably 7 and 10. I should think the kids were. And they were friendly. They smiled and they said hello. I think that's good. I, I meet some people. They don't even want to say hello to you. They sort of say it half, half-heartedly. Oh. oh, they might be depressed. I mean, we don't know, do you? It's a struggle. I had a nice drink of warm water then. Boiled warm water. If you can work that one out. That's a bit Irish, I know, but... Had a little sit for a minute. Decided not to eat anything, so I get up this hill. Because I get indigestion so quickly. But I love this walk. Usually it's... A, I've never met any. The only person I ever met on this walk... Was a National Trust bloke maintaining some trees. He had a chainsaw actually. I met a main man with a chainsaw in the middle of nowhere. But all my other walks, I'm talking about over a 10 year period on this walk, I've never met anyone coming the other way or anyone coming up behind me. But I'm expecting there to be people because, as you know, it's COVID-19. It's still locked down. And you're not supposed to be meeting up with anyone when you're out. You're supposed to be keeping safe distance. So, I go out on my own anyway. I'm quite used to lockdowns. I'm quite used to the hermit life. I haven't really found it a lot different to what I norm how I normally live. Because I live a... Uh, I'm not going to call it a loner's existence. I'm lonely. I can have people if I want to. I lo I'm a hermit. I like to go out. I like reflection. I like to listen to the trees and the birds and feel the wind I know when I go a, on a communal walk those things are commu shared communally they're a different experience I expect the farmers have noticed a lot more people about they put in signs up like through here for example I bet you anything a lot of people don't do that walk they go in there I have done it once myself All this will be alive soon with colour. You can hear the birds. I'm sorry about the heavy breathing. I do have a, a type of asthma. I don't really know what it is. Um, it's probably smoking related from... I used to smoke. When I smoke, I always used to be a chain smoker. Um... I haven't had a fag now for, not one single fag for seven years. I think it's seven years. No, it's eight years. It's eight years now, this February. It was eight years. But prior to the eight years, I hadn't had a fag really for another four years on top of that because I was giving it up. And most of the time, hardly smoked in those other four years. So I do tend to sometimes say I gave up in 2008 or 9 but I did have lapses at Christmas time and times of stress but I wasn't smoking on a regular basis I wasn't buying fags every day every week it was very occasional for those I was training my brain not to want and crave fags I was getting off tobacco and when I've given it up in the past, I've always still fancied a fag. I used to call it the drag on the fag feeling. But now, 
We're not going to go in here this time because it's winter. You're not going to get attacked by ticks and snakes. I'll go through here to, so we can look out. <coughs> this, last year when I done it, I didn't come in here. It must have been later in the year. So yeah, so this time I, I haven't got that craving. I don't think about the, the, the nice dr drag on the fag. I don't see it as a nice drag on the fag anymore. Oh, I could, the first time I've seen Glastonbury today because of the mist, I just zoom in. Long way off. I haven't been to Glastonbury. Well, I went on my bike last year, quite close to it. Yeah, we haven't been able to see that at all. The Vale of Avalon's been shrouded in mist all morning. It's about two o'clock in the afternoon now. There we go, there's Crook's Peak. We just go out here for a little bit, just to get the view. Like I say, I know all this area. I've, I've, I've done it all. I've walked it, cycled it. All these hills, I know them all, every single one of them. Right the way over to Glastonbury, right over there, and all the way around. I've done everything. This is my Somerset. Now, I say this is Somerset, this is north and southwest Somerset. The other side of Glastonbury is sort of east Somerset, Yeovil, um, all those sort of places over there. I I don't I do I know it is Somerset, but I don't have the same feeling for it. Um, they're a different tribe over there, Shepton Mallet and all that. It's a different place. But this area, I know all the way up to Bristol, all the way up to the Severn at Bristol, I've been done it, done it all. Both sides, all the hills, up to Portishead, right the way over the hills, right the way, right the way over to Red Hill, back through Mark, Cheddar, all those areas as well. I've, no, I've done it all. I've done a lot on my bike couple years back and then of course when I got my van I used to go off a bit but I've always still used the bus and the once I got my bus pass with when I was 60 I 61 I um did use it didn't have to worry about parking or driving and if it was just local I thought I'd just go on the bus you know but there were times when it was handy especially in the winter to have my van um because I could take um change of clothing you know, if I got covered in mud, take have a picnic in there, go over to Holford. I obviously do miss the Quantock Hills at the moment, but I will get out there. It doesn't take much longer than driving, really. You hop on a train, which takes hardly... It's quicker to go on the train to Taunton than drive there, put it that way. It's quicker on the train. All right? It'll take you a quarter of an hour on a train. It can take you an hour on driving to go to Taunton. But of course, I don't. When I go to the Quantocks, I don't normally go Taunton Way. I go Bridgewater and then to Minehead route. But when you've got to use train and bus, you have to go Taunton and then get on the bus to Minehead because there isn't a bus from Bridgewater. Very, I've debated this before. They don't want people from Bridgewater getting out on the Quantocks. Anyway, that's a bit of reflection, everyone. You'll get foxes, badgers. Look at this lovely little cops here. It's been left alone. It's been allowed to have wildlife in it. It's ha this is a happy little wood. And it'll be full of bluebells soon. There's probably a chair up there. I think there's a bench up on that. Up there. I'm not going over there though. I don't tend to come in here if it's summer because you'll get this to be filled with ticks. And, and high grass. But I reckon there's a bench over there. I'm not going to go and look. What's, what's the point? But um, the Cabri Hotel over, not, not Cabri, um, well, I can't remember what it's called now. Uh, a famous hotel anyway over there. So I've walked around the side of Crook's Peak, right from Winscombe Garage. And then I'm now just having a quick look around before making my way back to the other side of this hill to... Western Supermare. Over and out. <laughs>